Hey friends of Jen, uh, welcome to Movement Minneapolis. My name is Mark and uh, I will be conducting your Saturday Storytime workout. Today's workout is inspired by uh, what I think a lot of workouts are inspired by, uh, Russian peasants from the late 1800s. Yeah. So the workout today is called the Matrushka. Matrushka, uh, if you're not familiar with that term, is the Russian nesting doll. You may have seen them in the past. I, as a Russian immigrant, have uh, played with them when I was a kid. And that's where the, the doll is shaped like a bowling pin. And then you unscrew the top and there's another doll inside and you unscrew that and there's another doll inside. And uh, legend has it, the origin story of the Matrushka, uh, again, peasants, uh, as inspirational as they may be uh, for workouts, um, Le uh, late 1800s, uh, uh, one particular artist created this toy, uh, and it was uh, at that point considered uh, uh, actually an amazing invention and, and very uh, celebrated both for, from its toy perspective but then also from its artistic perspective because each thing, each doll within a doll was painted in a different fashion, uh, usually showing some kind of family lineage uh, and the, the first one highlighted the different tools the peasants used to conduct their daily life. And then the Matrushka, what the whole doll is named after, was the baby at the very end that uh, represented the future, uh, uh, the potential. Matrushka is uh, baby mother. So uh, today's workout that we're going to be doing is inspired by that idea. Now, the Matrushka, again, I don't know if you've ever played with one, but I have, it's culturally appropriate. Uh, but I was looking for one as a prop to give you a visual so that we have a better understanding, and I couldn't find one locally here in Minneapolis. What I did find is the current variation of it, as you can see here, uh, is the Hulk Matrushka. And then what happens is, when you take the half a Hulk head off, you've got a Thor underneath that, and then we keep going down the line, and we eventually end in the Matrushka here. Here's your Iron Man. And then finally we have your baby, if you can see there. And that's what the future is all about. So today's workout is gonna be a workout within a workout within a workout. And what's gonna be important about the workout is uh, understanding the structure. The movements most of you guys already know uh, but the structure is going to be the unique part and the intensity that you keep is going to be what makes it interesting. We'll go over the, the structure first and then we'll go into the individual movements. So the first thing that we need to go over is the structure of the workout. So remember Matrushka is uh, a doll within a doll within a doll. So the workout is going to be a workout within a workout within a workout. Uh, the specific movements are going to be irrelevant at this point because we're going to go over them uh, one by one and you'll have a written version um, either at the end of the video or in the notes. Uh, but what you need to keep in mind is how to actually conduct, where to rest, and uh, what intensity to move at. Uh, one of the, my favorite parts about this particular workout is that uh, it's short bursts of work that continually happen. So it's really hard to keep track of how hard you're working uh, until the very end where you're exhausted. Now, the story time workouts are primarily uh, during our Saturday classes, so class is about an hour long. So the workouts are this consistent, uh, uh, constant movement that happen for you know, 40, 45 minutes. So this workout, the way it's written, will take you anywhere between 40 minutes and 60 minutes. If you want to shorten it, begin to take rounds out of each section and it will shorten the entire thing. So first, the entire workout is the, the large uh, matrushka. It's the outside case. So that's the large workout. Then, within the workout, you have three distinct sections that you're going to be working on individually. And then within those three distinct sections, you have individual lines that you're going to follow through. So, this is how it works. First section, you're going to be doing for five rounds. Uh, five rounds of three by three 
whatever movement is there. So you're gonna do three movements, let's say in this case it's the push press. Three movements of the push press, you're gonna put the weights down, you're gonna pick them up, you're gonna do three more reps, put it down, pick them up, three more reps. Then you're gonna move on to the second movement. Three movements, or three reps, up, three reps, up, three reps, up. Then again, to the next movement. And then you do that, that those three movements in that cycle five times, all right? At the end of that, take a break. Obviously rest how you need to, uh, but at the end of that, where that's the larger break time. So you'll be using the same equipment uh, for those five rounds. The next section, it's only four rounds, so it's obviously getting easier. Uh, so this is kind of like your break section, but what's gonna happen is, now you're gonna do four rounds of this section, and this section, again, is three reps, but this time you're doing four sets of three reps of this movement, then four sets of three reps of this movement, and all the way down, four rounds of that, and then you're gonna go into the last section, where you have five movements, and you're gonna do five sets of three movements all the way down. Hopefully you got the pattern at this point. Um, again, if you need to shorten the workout, just take out rounds. You can break this down so that's one, two, three, uh, and that should take you, depending on your intensity and the weight you use, uh, that may take you 20 minutes. And then as you increase the rounds, they, they pile on uh, to the point where you can't really even um, when, when the gym members see this type of thing, I'm like, you know, this is super simple. Look, you're only doing three reps. It's not bad, but they know that uh, this is not only gonna make their, their body sweat, but their soul is gonna sweat. So depending on how deep you want this to go inside uh, of the core of who you are, uh, moderate the, the rounds, because that's gonna make the big difference. All right, so let's go over the individual movements and then do your thing. If you know the movements, don't listen to the rest of what I have to say and just go crazy, all right? Be right back. All right, first section, first three movements that we're gonna go over, push press, triple lunge, and squat jump with a hold, all right? Again, be conservative with the weights because you're gonna be moving more than you think you're gonna be moving. And uh, you can always change weights as you need to, but my recommendation is always be conservative. Push press, nothing too complicated with it, kettlebell or dumbbell. You're gonna start in this position. There's a secret to the push press, uh, which is everything actually depends on your core engagement uh, to get the power from your feet to go into the bell. So what you'll notice is if you have a habit of jumping or falling into the push position, the little dip, and your arms and shoulders dip separately than the rest of your body, then you're not really using your feet. You're kind of just using the elasticity of your shoulders. So what I want you to focus on with this movement is you're going to dip down, keep everything tight, dip down and then use the actual feet to propel the weights up. Again, the movement isn't complicated, but that one little piece of keeping your core solid is gonna make a pretty solid difference in regards to getting the power from your legs into your arms. Second motion, triple lunge. So what we're gonna do with the triple lunge is we're gonna do a forward lunge, a back lunge, and then a uh, side lunge. If you want, you can do a curtsy, but stick with the forward and back just to create, uh, just to get that the momentum piece into it. So main thing I want you to focus on this is whatever leg is bending takes the majority of the weight. So as you drop into this lunge, this leg is taking the weight and propelling you back to either standing or propel yourself back, swing through. Now this leg is taking the weight and this leg's gonna do the work of lifting you into the third position, which for now we'll just demonstrate a side lunge where this leg is gonna fall out. 
Now I'm going to be out of frame, but this leg is now taking the weight, and this leg is going to propel you back up. So the movement in full will be this leg takes the weight, this leg goes back, this leg takes the weight, this leg now goes out and takes this weight. And then you're coming back up. So one pass of that is one rep. So three of those. Here's a side note. I have a tendency to do things uneven, mainly to mess with people, but you're gonna end up being uneven with the reps. So hopefully your OCD doesn't kick in too much. Uh, the last movement on this is a squat jump with a hold. The hold is in the bottom of the squat jump. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go down to the bottom of the squat, you're gonna jump up, you're gonna come back, and I want you to catch your momentum at the bottom of the squat, hold it for just one second, and then come back up. So it's not a bouncy squat jump. You're gonna jump, catch yourself, and then jump back up. So you're gonna start, squat down, up, lock, up, lock, and continue for a count of three. All right? So you're gonna do three reps of each of those, three rounds of each of those, and then five rounds of the entire thing. Section two, now we have four movements. We're gonna start with the bottoms up kettlebell uh, goblet squat. Uh, which is going to be uh, an interesting thing depending on the weight you choose. Uh, then we have the halo twisting squat jump, which isn't as complicated as it sounds, and a sumo deadlift. All right, so the first thing, the bottoms up goblet. So what I want you to do is, I'm going to go conservative because I don't want to work out right now, um, but you're going to basically, you're going to swing into a bottoms up position both hands are gonna be inside and holding it in the goblet position. You'll be surprised how annoying it is to maintain this stability. And then from there, you're gonna go to, into a full goblet squat. Chest stays tall. This is gonna keep you pretty honest. Uh, so again, choose your weight, your weight conservatively. So up into goblet position, and then just squat through, keeping this at your face, uh, but make sure that it doesn't fall into your face. It doesn't make the workout any more fun that way. So three reps of that, four rounds of those three reps. Then you're gonna move on to a halo. Halo, you can use the same kettlebell, a lighter kettlebell, a heavier one. Again, you choose the weight. Starts right in front of your face. And the way that I like describing this is you're gonna mess up your hair on the way back, and you're gonna mess up your hair on the way forward. I'm not gonna mess up my hair, but this is the reason I went bald, is because I kept doing halos and it rubbed the hair right off. So you have that to look forward to. All right, so it starts here. Then you're gonna bring this to your side. Your hair gets messed up. You're now behind you. Here's a little tip at this point in the behind section. Don't let your ribs flare out. It's not gonna be, that range of motion shouldn't be coming from your uh, mid to low back. That range of motion should be coming from your shoulders, opening up. So you should be opening here, not opening here. So you start here, drop back. This is not there, you're here, it's open. Then you're coming through, brushing your hair going forward, back here. So here, 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 okay? Uh, you're gonna do three, do four rounds of that. Luckily, that'll end up being even for you. Uh, the twisting squat jump, movement number three. Uh, again, squat jump is still the same. This time, we're not holding. I just want you to land facing a different direction than when you launched. So whether it's going to be uh, all the way around 90 degrees or just short little twists, doesn't matter. I'm just interested in you squatting, jumping, landing facing a different direction. So you can go here and just end up here, or you can go here and end up here. Whatever makes you happy along those lines. But the goal is do three jumps consecutively. So this one's a more springy and always end up facing a different direction. Last movement, sumo deadlift. 
use kettlebell, use a barbell, whatever you have accessible to you. Feet wide, right now you can't see it in the frame, slightly uh, turned out, that's the nature of the hip. Then from here, the cue that I like using for the sumo deadlift is uh, basic structures, keep the chest tall, uh, but the pressure on this up part when you're coming up, I want you to think instead of pushing your butt through, I want you to think of the crease where your butt and your hamstring comes together so that as you're coming through and you're in this position and you come through, I want you to think of pushing that crease forward. And don't lean back in the motion, just push that forward, come back out, push that forward, come back out. So here, instead of uh, this position, which often happens when you think of just glute forward, think about this position, I don't know if you can see behind my hand, right here, where the butt and the hamstring meet, and then when you're going through that motion, just think about this, locking forward, and then you get into the full lockout for the sumo deadlift. Again, be conservative or not. Uh, three reps, four rounds, and then that entire thing is gonna be four rounds. Then we'll talk about section three. All right, section three, we've got five movements. You're still gonna be doing three reps, but this time you're five rounds of each three reps, three rounds of the entire thing. Uh, five movements are a kettlebell swing or double kettlebell swing and we'll go over either doing it inside your legs or doing it outside like a ski swing. Uh, we have a double bent over row so those same kettlebells you can use for uh, a row. We've got an alternating windmill, uh, push-ups and a squat thruster. I'm not going to go over push-ups, um, there's plenty of resources on that in the world. So the kettlebell swing, first thing. And this is, you're gonna do three at a time, which makes it even more annoying um, than, uh, than doing just regular swings. So double swing, you know, you start from the height position. If you want inside, uh, it's hard to start from the height position if you're uh, uh, starting from the outside. But we'll pretend that we height in order to just skip that part. Uh, and then we're going through. So on the swing, uh, again, I like to focus on this little spot between where the hamstring and the butt comes through, the same way we did with the deadlift. Uh, but the focus is going to be on, number one, making sure you have enough clearance between your legs to get the kettlebells through. Uh, one style I, I like doing, and there's different styles of it, is making sure that the thumbs are pointing in on my way there so that I can actually move through cleanly. Uh, and then if they're outside, the thumbs are pointing forward. So if I'm working here, the thumbs are pointing in and I can maneuver the weights however I need to. If I'm pointing, if I'm working on the outside, the body movement is exactly the same. And then Jen has a whole bunch of uh, videos to help you clean up those specifics. I don't want to eat up time doing that. But the outside swing, the body movement is exactly the same, butt back, arms back, and then you're moving through here. Take a narrow stance. I have narrow hips. It's easy for me to swing by my legs uh, without hitting them. If you have any wider hips, then you might hit your legs. Be smart in your choice of swing. I don't want you thinking about, am I gonna knock my knee out uh, while swinging? So be smart about it. Uh, one major difference is the outside swing is gonna work upper back and uh, traps a little bit more. So you might feel, if you're not used to doing those, you might feel uh, your traps a little bit um, sore over the next couple of days, which might be nice. Uh, double bent over row. I want you to stay as strict as possible with this. So imagine uh, going into an RDL. So again, my favorite spot where the butt and the hamstring come back to, uh, together. You're gonna push out into that spot. Make sure that the weight of your body is felt somewhere in the glute and into the leg. I don't want you feeling like you're holding up your body with your low back. So if you are, you're gonna have to find that place where you can push and feel 
the weight of your upper body in the hamstring or in the glute uh, so that it's not on your low back. So that's a little bit experimenting if you're not used to that motion. The rest of it, the way that I cue this is, butt goes back, you're now into this position. I like for you to stay strict with it. So what you're going to do is you're gonna go shoulder blades back, elbows to the torso, elbows out, shoulders out. Shoulder blades back, elbow to the torso, elbows out, shoulders out. So that the shoulder blade is actually going through the full range of motion. And it's not, you're not just either keeping your elbow, your shoulder forward, and you're driving your elbow only, or that you're just keeping your shoulder back and going through that entire motion. Keeping your shoulder blades stuck is not gonna help you long-term. Um, last, oh no, that last thing, sorry. Alternating windmill. Now the alternating piece is rep to rep, which makes us a little bit unique from just doing uh, two windmill motions. And the other thing is if you're, this is a double windmill, so both hands are gonna have weight. Again, the specifics, um, uh, Jen has resources along that, so she can go over or you can search for those resources. But the alternating piece is, you're gonna start one high, one low, feet are turned away from the top hand. Now, what's gonna happen is as you go down, you're gonna go as far as that is gonna let you go, this weight is gonna just add a little bit more tension into your life. Then you're gonna come up all the way to standing, feet neutral. You're gonna switch, feet change direction, and then you're gonna move through. This hip doesn't like moving so much. I have to fix that. And then you're gonna switch, and then you're gonna move through. Okay, uh, it makes it interesting. Number one, to keep track of where you're moving, but it really, it really tests both sides pretty quickly. Again, three reps is another one that leaves you a little uneven. If you want to do extra work, go for it. Um, Push-up squat thrust. So push-ups, we're not going to go over. Squat thruster, a favorite of everyone's. Uh, we're not going to, so this is basically a burpee without a push-up. Uh, we're not going to do the push-up because we just did a whole bunch of push-ups before. So focus on this is uh, be careful on your way down and then try to spring up as best you can. There is a little bit of a hop in there, which depending on where you go to the gym or if you're coming from CrossFit, uh, it's a different experience. But the main thing is on this is don't let this happen on your way down. So don't let yourself bow out or go through here, making a U and not keeping this solid. So whether that means taking your time, planting your hands, kicking out, coming back through and jumping as separate steps to make it plausible for you, that's fine. The actual work is getting from the ground up uh, safely. So it's a good practice just in general from that perspective. But on the way down, don't just fall. Control the entire motion. As I like to say in the gym, is you have to own every part of the motion. There is no passivity. Gravity is gonna push you down, but it doesn't mean that you have to fall down with it. You can just accept it and move through it uh, under your own uh, choice. So if you need to, just squat through, plant your hands, kick out. And then from here, you're gonna kick back back here and then up. If you want to do it faster, you can uh, absorb the weight a little bit, so, and then jump back up. So speed is controlled by your ability to control your midsection more so than anything else. All right, again, three of those, take a breath, and then repeat that five times, repeat the entire thing three times. All right, so that's the entire workout. Um, good luck. Tell me how it goes. Uh, a future story time workout that we're working on right now uh, is an homage to Janet Jackson and uh, Beyonce. So stay tuned and hopefully we can get that on camera for you guys too. It won't be part of this series, but it'll come out uh, eventually. All right, I'm out of breath. I did like three reps. All right, I gotta go.